Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed Show. I am your spicy host, Tara Rose, and I'm here every episode to expose, uncover, and share what I know about SEX. This isn't what you find in your typical sex ed class. Juicy sex talk is under-discussed, and I'm doing what I can to change that. Sex is evolving. People are empowered more than ever to detach from cultural norms and design the sex life they crave. And hey, if you're looking for more after the show, I invite you to get social. My Instagram is the.sexed.show, and I'd love for you to give me a follow. So before we jump in today's conversation, it's essential to recognize and honor the sacred land in which we gather. I stand on the traditional territories of Treaty 7, a land rich in history, wisdom, and resilience. May this acknowledgement deepen our conversation and connection to the earth beneath us and foster a spirit of respect for the diverse tapestry of life woven into the soil of Treaty 7. So today we are embarking are an exploration of pleasure that goes beyond the familiar. Joining me is the extraordinary Pamela Mad Madsen, a trailblazer in somatic wellness education, and together we're diving into the erotic spectrum, exploring pleasure beyond penetration. In this conversation, we are challenging societal norms, inviting you to question preconceived notions and embrace a broader, more exclusive understanding of sexuality. Pamela's vast expertise guides us through the concept of the erotic spectrum, unraveling the myths and stigmas associated with non-penetrative intimacy. It's a journey of self-discovery, connection, and liberation. It's time to embrace and celebrate the multifaceted nature of human connection. So get comfortable, open your heart, and let the journey into the erotic spectrum begin. Welcome, Pamela, to my show. Yay! And I found myself, as you were reading this, thinking about, well, when people hear the word penetrative sex, what they hear is P and V. Yes. That's what they hear. So, so for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> P stands for penis and V stands for vagina. So most people, when they think of non-penetrative sex, they're talking about P and V. Okay. But actually, you know, Tara, it's bigger than that. Penetrative sex is also how I look in your eyes. Mm. And like how I give you my presence. And like I'm looking in your eyes right now, huh? Are you? I am. <laughs> and I'm like gazing deeply. And I add some breath. And do you feel like you have my attention? I do. My and presence. I feel like it's things have slowed down in my body too. Yeah. And I'm penetrating right now. And I don't have a penis. And I'm not going anywhere near your vagina. Though you may feel it there. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm doing my job really well. You're feeling some warmth down below. Yeah. So penetrative sex is, as I said in the beginning, way more than PNB, first of all. So we can have non-PV penetrative sex through intimacy, through presence, through intention, Penetrative energy in S and M, BDSM, power exchange doesn't always include penises entering vaginas, right? right? But it can be penetrative. To be held by ropes can feel penetrative. So there are lots of ways where we're talking about non-penetrative, but I really feel like we need to like broaden the landscape first of all. That penetrative sex. The, the buffet of penetrative sexual energy is bigger than a penis or a dildo entering a vagina and is part of standard heterosexual, heteronormative lovemaking mm -hmm. um, or hooking up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we are so inundated with that. I'm so exhausted by these hot scenes 
in movies where they're like, yes, we want you. And then she gets thrown up and, and her skirts get lifted and he's in her. Yeah. I mean, it's like, ow. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> right. So I'm always like an ow when they do that. I mean, she made me like really excited by him and she could be nice and juicy, but I don't know. She could be juicier. Mm-hmm. And it's always this really hot scene, right? And they're grappling and she's using in a dress and they're throwing her skirts up and he's dropping his pants and they're going for it. And, you know, that's the model. Yeah. Right. It's still the model. It's still what they're showing. Even with intimacy experts on on the film. Right. We're still bam. And so. You know what I do which is what you do with this um, somatic sex education. A lot of the work that we do is out of course. Yeah. All about out of course. So what do I mean by that fancy word out of course? You know what I mean, but they may not know what I mean because they may not even know what PNV is, right? <laughs> and it's not that they're stupid. You're not stupid out there. It's just that, you know, we're sex professionals. And as sex professionals, we have lots of different kinds of language. So out of course is the term that we use when we are not going to enter orifices. Mm-hmm. So we're not going in, into anuses or mouths or uh, vaginas, okay? We are sticking to the whole body. We could be including the vulva or the penis, but we're not we're, we're, we're not penetrating with bodily fluids, okay? And the work I do with Back to the Body, big focus is on out of course. And it's, and yes, there is penetration with, with eyes, with sometimes power exchange. Um, and yes, fingers can go in and toys can go in holes of our body. But the emphasis is not on The emphasis is not there. That's sort of like the end game. Mm -hmm. And what people were talking specifically about people who walk around with vulvas, we just need way more time, way, way more time. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's not, it's not um, unheard of for somebody to want an hour of non-penetrative erotic play before going into a penetrative feeling and whether that's oral sex or whether that is intercourse in whatever hole you're you're playing in and and understanding that that's where the pleasure lies the pleasure actually can lie in you know breath on your neck and a nibble Mm -hmm. and like how slowly you know it's the blueprints are out there and and i and i and i'm not talking about a program i'm just talking about blueprints okay the blueprints are out there when you watch when you when you watch when you watch your experience I take the music on the airwaves. I lost track for a moment where I was going. And you hear the songs that you grew up with. I want a man with the slow hands. I want a man <laughs> with an easy touch. Right? Right. And these are all songs. And they're all about slowing down. You know, and so, you know, we get these two mixed messages. We're like, grab her. Or him, bend him over, pound away, jerk off, vibrate out. Orgasm. Orgasm, one and done, 15 minutes, let's get, let's go to In-N-Out and have a burger. Right. So like changing that narrative Yeah. to what if you owned a massage table? I was just going to say that. (laughs) Amazon deliver. Yes. Yeah, you know, even find it on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. There's lots of wherever tables. for a hundred bucks you can get a table, right? And you know, making a space in your life in your home to learn how to give and receive touch. Yes, 
And by working with a professional like you, coming on retreat and receiving that. And when you, when you receive it, you start to understand what is possible for your pleasure. Like mm -hmm. what's possible. And what's great about a massage table for non-penetrative sex is that you have access to the whole body. Mm -hmm. You could be climbing on that body, putting your weight on that body. You, you're able to get to all the parts. And you know what? If it turns into at the end of the day and you're, if, and you're with a known non-practitioner human and you end up wanting, you know, to be fucked, well, then that's an option if you decide that that's on the table, haha, -ha, so to speak, right? <laughs> but there is such expanded pleasure and joy in expanded arousal that can turn into if you're if you are on the journey and you want you want that climax at the end of the day your climax is going to be so much fuller and richer because your sex organs are so engorged mm -hmm. from the pleasure mm -hmm. from i'll use the word edging from from having full body um, stimulation. Yeah. And, you know, it's gorgeous. And I, you know, Joseph Kramer, who I am, and you are, if you're a sexological body work in his lineage, um, says this is available to everybody, but not everybody is willing to put in the time and the effort mm -hmm. to have this kind of incredible pleasure, which is really so much bigger than the scene you see in the movie. Where, you know, she's she's almost always standing. I'm thinking of and, Bridgerton with this. Like, yeah, that's where yeah, my I brain know, goes. Yeah, I mean, they're always like, you know, skirts up, on the back. You yeah. Know, I mean, they, you have to have even like good balance. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just not that pleasurable. It's exciting maybe to see and get the idea. Yeah. But in real life, I don't choose that. Unless yeah. it's a part of some other scene that I'm like invested in having. Exactly. Because, you know, fast, hard, and furious can be wonderful on my buffet. Right. It's on my buffet. I'm not it's, eating that every night. No, exactly. And you're expanding your knowledge when you start to experiment with touching each other and being, listening about what they want noticing what you want in your body and receiving that too. And sometimes I find if it's just P and V, the fast, hard, furious, you get bored and your oh, desire God. goes down and you don't <laughs> want to fuck anymore. And you're like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my body? I used to love having sex. And then it just dwindles away. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that like the things that get me excited is the armpit of my lover. Like, have armpit. you spent time in the armpit of your lover? Like, does he smell good to you? Did Does she smell good to you? Are, are you like smelling? Are you tasting? Are you touching their body as if you were somebody who had... um low sight or blind mm -hmm. and the body is braille and you're using your fingers to read them you're using your ears to tune into their breath you're using your body to move with their body like how how curious can you be you know sexual currency for me is attention yeah Yes. Okay. It's it, it's like not the size of of your of of your P or the tightness of your V. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's attention. Yeah. You know, are you savoring me? Do I savor you? You know, in order to have really delicious pleasure. The first thing that needs to happen for anyone, male or female or non-binary, is you need 
to stop being in your hypervigilance. So let's say you um, have painful intercourse, whether it's vaginal or anal, okay? And so the whole time you're, you're in sex play, you're nervous about having your vagina or your anus or your mouth penetrated. Like the anticipation of it yeah, going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so what's actually happening is a clench response. The armoring. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're clench. Um, because we don't know when it's gonna happen. Right? Yeah. If we're if we're in the receiver mode. And so having agreements, first of all, that you know what? I wanna have sexy time. Can we have sexy time? And I would like sexy time this time to have certain no play zones. So we're going to agree ahead of time that nothing large is being put in my vagina or my anus or my mouth. So that means a cock or a dildo or a fist or a toy, whatever it is. That's the agreement. Will you be in that agreement with me? Can we? Can I trust you? Like, even if you're really wanting it, then in the middle, you're not going to say to me, I really want you to, I really got to fuck you right now. Or I really want to eat your pussy. Or I really want you to suck my cock. It's like, no, we're not doing anything like that. And so if I can trust you in that agreement, then what can start to happen is that my body begins to be like a, like a flower, right? Start to open. And all that hypervigilance goes away. And then I get to share a different kind of pleasure with you that you might find extraordinary. Mm -hmm. and, and, and see what that feels like if you take something off the table that makes you tense. So if anal sex makes you tense, then take it off the table. You know, if having a cock shoved down your throat is not delicious for you because a it shouldn't be down your throat unless it's delicious for you because it's gonna be one shitty blowjob okay so you know blowjobs are for people who want to love the cock yeah same thing with the vulva okay yeah. or eating ass you gotta want it baby you gotta want to eat that ass you gotta want to eat that whatever it is, right? You got to want it. As a receiver, you kind of know the difference between somebody who's like, I want to just worship that cock and right. I'm doing this for you. Right, right. <laughs> and I love you're missing it. She's doing what I call the chick bob, which is when you like take your head and you do forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. That's what my husband does when um, I ask him like, like, is roast beef okay for dinner? I get chick bob. You don't want that on a blowjob. Okay. So, you know, taking those things off the table with your lover um, as a way of like rebooting your sex life. Yes. And it's not forever, right? No. And it's sometimes. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's like sex should, sex should, oh my, you know, slap my face. <laughs> Sex should never be should. Um, sex is filled with options. It's filled with lots of ways to explore. And out of course, and being in agreement with out of course can open it for you and your partner. You know, I when I teach, let's say, giving to a male-bodied partner, and this can go for a female-bodied partner as well, is I start with massage. I put them on a massage table and I start with massage. Why do I, why do you think I do that, Tara? To build arousal, to notice pleasure and to get some blood flow going in the body. All that's true. And what's also true is like letting go of the stress of the day. Yes. So a relaxed yeah. body is more open to receiving. So I start with head and shoulders and back and hands and feet. And I will spend an hour 
and then my touch gradually changes. Maybe I put claws on my hands and I have nails. <laughs> so, but claws are really great. And maybe, you know, the touch starts to go from um, a more um, traditional massage to all of a sudden my nails go down the back. And then you hear the, oh, the release of breath with your human, right? And then I may start to incorporate other kinds of sensation, touch. I may use my mouth on the body, like in little bites or kisses, right? But I'm not penetrating the body. And I'm luxuriating in the pleasure of sensation and the variation of touch. Mm -hmm. People get a little stuck in their stroke. Like you ever ask someone for like a back rub or, and they're, they just like always are doing like the same thing over and over and over and over. Oh and my over. God. Pamela, and, and, every night I ask for head rubbies or a back touch or hand massage for my partner. And I can tell when he's not paying attention because he's just doing the same thing over and over. And I'm like, ah, I short circuit. I'm like, yeah, I'm not a cat. Yes, right, exactly. Like, not your pet dog or cat. Yes. Like doing the little scruffy movement is not going to work for me. Yeah. Gets old in about a minute and a half. So yeah. the thing about out of course is that it's a bit of an art that you need to vary tempo, mm -hmm. you need to vary what you're doing with the body. The body loves surprises, doesn't want to surprise us outside of the boundary. Right. But if it's in the boundary that you have agreed upon with your partner, a little fear, a little excitement, a little, ooh, what was that, is delicious. Like moaning your pleasure in touching them. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I love how you smell here. I'm just going to drink that. In. You know, giving words of affirmation, the curve of your body. Like, I've got to put my hands around them. Mm -hmm. So beautiful to feel, to feel them. I love how your inner labia just sort of peeks out, winks at me. Like, oh my God, I really want to lick it, but I won't. <laughs> but I can blow on it. Yes. And it's airing a little narrative, like up your game a little bit. Yeah. You know, out of course is actually requires a little more curiosity, maybe a little storytelling. Maybe your partner responds to auditory clues. So if I'm given and I may love go, mm, oh God, I'm so hot right now touching you. Like I'm dripping down my leg. And I, I might even take their hands and say, I want you to feel how wet I am and let them absorb that as they're laying on the table receiving, that their receptivity to my touch is an incredible turn on to me. And that's like the pleasure loop. Yeah. That giving is receiving and receiving is giving. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I know there's all these different, everybody's got a model about taking and giving and three minute games and all the stuff. And it's all fantastic. And in my world, giving is receiving and receiving is giving because I take tremendous pleasure in giving pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I, I take tremendous pleasure in receiving pleasure. And so whether I'm in the touch role or the receiving role, I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And it could be very, very sexy for the giver and very sexy for the receiver. And we want to honor boundaries. And I really, really suggest, and you know, people who work in the field know this. We don't change the rules in the middle. No, can you speak more to why that is? Sure, because we get hot pants. <laughs> you know, we get hot pants. And so if we 
make the agreement that we're not going to fuck. That we're going to stick to out of course. And then you're like, oh my God, I want you on top of me. I want you to bend me over. I want you to, you know, like, ooh, I hear that desire. Ooh, I hear that how much you want me to take my big hard cock and give it to you good. Or I hear how much you want me to take this dildo. And I hear how much you want my mouth on your genitals. I'll make it, I'll make it ACDC. You know, <laughs> I, I, I want, you know, I hear how much you want that. And, oh, I want that. But I, I we're not going to have that today. But what if you felt my breath mm. on your genitals? What mm. if, you know, what if I talk about while I'm touching your body, how I would be fucking you right now. And all this time you're touching, you're fingering, you're loving, maybe you're vibrating um, with toys and you tell the story of their desire. Like if I could, but I can't. Mm -hmm. I would be bending you over with this massage table right now. And I would be grabbing your vulva or your cock or your balls from behind. And I would be pressing deeply into you. Oh, God, I'm really thinking about how I would be just pounding you <laughs> right now. And, and right about that moment, your partner may be exploding an orgasm. And there is no um, penetration. Right. And you've had this totally hot scene. And so what are the tools that you need? Well, you may want to up your game a little bit. Like I I bought some books on sexting, which helped me create stories. I listened to audio books. You know, there's all these apps where it's audio sex, right? That you can sell pleasure to. Mm -hmm. Listen to the stories. Listen to what are your partner's key words or their key desires. Mm -hmm. So like, I love to be spanked. Love to be spanked. So like my lover could be saying, maybe we took spanking off the table, even though it's non-penetrative in the traditional way. You know, there could be, if I could right now, I would be lowering your panties down to your knees, bending you over. And this is of course, like after the body is fully relaxed and after I've done all the other things, you know, adding narrative sound and breath as a giver. Mm -hmm. Also, as a receiver, you want to encourage your partner, right? So unless you're playing a doll game where you're not allowed to move or make sound and you're playing dolly, that's a game. <laughs> you can look it up on the internet. It is. So, yes. so unless you're playing dolly, which by the way, love playing dolly. <laughs> unless you're playing dolly, um, you, you don't want to be a cadaver yeah. on the table, right? So you want to learn how to move. You want to offer real estate. When I say offer real estate, it's like if your person is massaging and touching you and you're like a, a hard, straight body on the table, not moving. Mm -hmm. It's not that sexy. Some active receiving is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Active receiving. And let that be a skill set. Yeah, it is. Like maybe that's really hard for you in the beginning. Yeah. So. And that's something you talk about with your partner. Look, I'm not really good at making sound. I'm not really good at moving my body. Um, I would love you to help me with that. And then when they do that, like praise. Oh, when you just groaned just now and I touched you so slowly on the tip of your clitoris and you moaned. It made me want to do it again. <laughs> and it made me want to do it again oh there's that sound again oh my god I'm getting so aroused by you and so you know it's a team sport yes mm -hmm. reading each other noticing what's going on communicating being vulnerable oh and we're not taught how to have that good sex 
and that great no. intimacy. This is, it is an art and it, it is, takes it is practice. An art. Yes. And we're, we're told that, you know, you, do, you know, my mom, God bless her. She would say, you know, Pamela, I didn't have to go to college to learn how to have sex. And I'm like, I got it wrong. And there's a whole lot that you may not have gotten to experience. Right. And, you know, I think we look at our lovers or our partners, spouses, as our sexual healers, as our teachers, as our, you know, and what's true is they're not. Mm -hmm. That seeing a practitioner on your own, coming back to your own body first, learning what it feels like to receive good touch is an incredible way to learn how to give good touch. Mm -hmm. And if you see a yoga instructor to do yoga or a nutritionist, like all the things, I won't waste time. Why wouldn't you see a sex educator to learn about your body and how to receive or how to give touch or come as a couple if you want to and, and do it together with somebody coaching you. There's no, there, there is no shame in that. Actually, that shows your sophistication. Mm -hmm. That shows your enlightenment. That shows you and your partner that you want more for each other. Right. Right. And, you know, I remember speaking to a woman and she was like, deciding whether to come on a retreat or not. And she said, but I have this new guy and I'm thinking that maybe he could be my sexual healer. And I was like, oh my God, what a thing to dump on this dude. Like right. not only, not only do you want him to take you to pizza, but he should heal you sexually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's not fair. Mm -hmm. It's just not fair. It's, and, and, there is so much that men and women need to learn about their own bodies and that there are resources. And so there's resources through you, Tara, and for women who want to do group retreats, my back to the body retreats that have been around for 13 years and we have science and everything behind them now. And then there's, there are programs for men. Mm -hmm. So um, it was known as Apollo Project for hetero men. I think it's now Happy Touch being run by Cosmo Means. There's a beautiful program run by Court Vox um, at, at the Body Vox that are retreats for gay men and queer men, um, trans men. Back to the Body also works with bisexual and trans humans. Um, we just need you to identify as female. Mm -hmm. And you need to have a vulva. So if you're a trans human, post-surgical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that's from learning. That's just from learning. It's yeah. not from prejudice. It's just that it's awfully hard to keep talking about vulvas and women showing their vulvas. And there is a person who is identifying as female and their genitals look different. And sometimes it can be disturbing to women who have trauma. Mm -hmm. around male looking genitals and so we have that as a boundary and I'm sorry if that excludes people because it sucks and sometimes we do things we have to do them mm -hmm. but we do post-surgical trans mm -hmm. and um, people who are non-binary but presented female bodies mm -hmm. so there are places for people to go I just named some of them I named you I named my program for women and we do a couples retreat once a year and there are two programs for men, one for queer men, one, one for heteronormative men or questioning them, bisexual men, that people can go and check out, see if it's right for them, have a consultation. Don't expect your partner to be the one to do everything for you. Go do some of this work for yourself. Learn about that, of course. Learn about what good quality epicurean touch feels like yes oh my god do you remember so the can... first time you received oh my a god. body work session that like shifted your life yes <laughs> like oh and, and you know what's true tara is that it still does 
yeah, that's it never ends it, actually. It, it like never old, it never gets old, it yeah. never ends. Every session is always different for me. Yeah. And it is different than penetrative sex with a lover. It yeah. just is. Yeah. And so, you know, as we come, you know, as as we, you know, explore this conversation of what is penetrative energy and all the ways that you can explore it and how you want to, if you want to bring in penetration, great with agreements and with time. So think about this, think about this very simple phrase, not too much, not too soon, okay? Not too much and not, not too soon. So really titrating, mm-hmm. titrating the experience. Mm-hmm. I think I learned that from you. And I say that to my clients, I watched a webinar that you did for the SSEA and you said too much, too fast, too soon. And it's just, you're you're losing the ability to really notice your body, but also for that armoring and that, uh, to come up. Thank you for filling it in for me because I was dropping the third one. (laughs) So it's, 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 it's too much, too fast, too soon. Yes. And we, we, we just get overloaded in our bodies. Yeah. We can't feel the nuance. So it's like when the chef puts out a petite amuse at a good restaurant, they give you a little bite, right? They settle you in. Mm-hmm. Would you like sparkling water, flat, bottled, glass of wine, right? Mm-hmm. Slow. We light a candle. We're handed a menu. It's, it's not too fast, right? It's not too soon. They give you a space, take a breath. Mm-hmm. And then, well, it's up to you if you order too much. But, <laughs> you know, that metaphor only goes so far. But we feel more when we are allowed to slowly titrate up our pleasure, the savory. And then, you know, if you're wanting that orgasm, which I don't always need, if I've had a You know, and I will tell you, like a two hour table session, I'm, I'm often so filled by my expanded arousal that I don't, I don't need, you know, I don't need more than that. So Tara, I'm paying attention to the time. Me too. Yeah. And I'm I'm (laughs) noticing that we're we're out of 45 minutes more. Okay. And um, you had wanted me to teach something. Yeah. Do you want do you want us to go there? Okay. Yes. The lotus lotus, lotus lift lift. meditation. Yeah. 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 Is this something that I can participate in by listening while you're is it is it like a prompt? Is it you, like you, a, you're gonna do it with me? Okay. Perfect. So when I do this at retreat, we usually do it with two humans back to back. Okay. But you can do it alone on your own. So what this has to do with is it has to do with bringing arousal into your, so remember I talked constantly about the menu. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So we're flipping the page on the menu. Okay. Okay. So now we're not talking about partner engagement. Okay. We're talking about solo play, Mm. non-penetrative solo play that is a way for you to cultivate your sexual wellness and using your inner pharmacy, like to set your day. Mm-hmm. And so when I do this at home, I do this in a, in a little bit of, of a um, quicker way. I think our free gift for y'all is that they're going to get like the full video of Lotus Lift Meditation. Okay. And so they'll be able to do that and nudge Quinn on that. Make okay. Sure I'm getting because I just, <laughs> said it. So I'm going to teach you how to do this in a solo play way. And I'm going to explain why it's important. Okay. So what we do is we, we take our hand and a hand, one hand, and I sit on it between my legs. So I'm holding my vulva. It could be your cock. Um, and I'm holding my vulva and I'm putting one hand on my heart, one hand on my vulva. And I begin this rocking motion. 
just rocking, rocking motion back and forth. And I'm going to remind you about um, if I was teaching this class, I would be reminding people that this is a way that we have this rocking motion in our pelvis is how we've connected to spirit and God. So if you think about Orthodox Jews davening, how they pray, it's a rocking motion that goes front and back and front and back, and they're praying. And they are also stimulating arousal without even knowing that that's what they're doing. That's what's happening. Whirling dervishes, right? They go around and around in a circle. What are they moving their pelvis? And if you go to Islamic culture and the bowing on their hands and knees and going up and down and up and down, we're moving our pelvis, right? The Quakers go to the Shakers, which was a the Shakers were an offshoot of the Quakers, and they make rocking chairs. And they basically rock themselves to heaven. They didn't make babies. They rocked. So there is something about this rocking motion that is spiritual mm -hmm. and uses our inner pharmacy, uses our arousal to help us connect to our inner selves. And so we are rocking. We are rocking. And I learned how to do this when I worked with Deepak Chopra and I did all those hours of meditation and um, he's not a form guy and I would sit cross-legged with my heel pressed against my vulva and I would meditate that way and I got these extraordinary meditations and he asks these three soul questions and they are who am I what do I want what's getting me so I've taken those soul questions and I've combined it with holding our genitals and rocking. And it's guided, but you'll be able to do this with yourself. If you were doing this with another person, they'd be writing it all down for you. You could take your phone, put it on record and do it that way by yourself. And the question could would be, who am I? Who am I? And then I would encourage you, and we don't have to do this right now, but I would encourage you to say who you are. And you, know, you may start with, my name is Tara and I'm a sex educator, that's who I am. And you know, I don't know very much about your whole life, but for everyone out there, you may be like, I'm a sister, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist. But then maybe like, I'm the color purple. I'm actually Cleopatra. I am a fountain of energy. I am creativity. Mm -hmm. I am all these things. And so, you know, that may be recorded. You may just have it in your head if you're alone. Um, and then it's, it's like, well, what do you want? And you're rocking and you're letting the answers bubble up from down coming up. What do you want? What do you really want? Not what somebody wants you to want, but what do you really want? And then I'll keep asking that question and let as much of it flow out of you as you can. And then I'll say, so what's standing in your way? What's the obstacle? What's the obstacles? And then you'll name the obstacles. Common one is myself. Okay, I hear that all the time. And I do that with millions of women. Oh, it's an overstatement, thousands of women. So, and so they'll write down what their obstacles are. And again, you could be, if you're doing this by yourself, you could just put notes on, hit record and record your answers. And then, you know, if I'm doing this in a group, I might say, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to find, I want you to find a desire, the thing that you really want, low lying fruit, something that you could actually give yourself today or plan for. Today, what is that thing? Great. Write it down. Make the pledge to yourself. What is the obstacle that you can let go of? Mm -hmm. Low-lying fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, something you actually can do today. You know, for me, it was I had to order American Express cards for my people, and I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. What was the obstacle? I didn't want to do it. Well, Pamela, got to do it. I did it today. It took an hour. You know, it's off my plate. So like, what is that? And you can do this, Tara, in a shorter way. 
So if you want to do it as like a check-in with yourself, you can be laying in bed, holding your vulva, heart, giving yourself a little rock, dropping into a meditative state. And who am I today? Well, today I'm a sex educator. Great. What do you want? I want this podcast with Tara to reach hundreds of people and change their lives in some way. Well, what's getting in your way? Well, actually nothing. What could be standing in my way is people being willing to find the podcast and listen to it. But that's not in my control. Right? Like, are you still here? Are you still listening? Are you still on the podcast? Or did you leave us? Mm-hmm. You're still here. But then you just learned a tool that you can learn as your own, like, day calendar. Who am I today? Well, today I want to be a lover. Great. What do you want? I want to go buy a massage table. And I want to get a book on sexy massage and I want to get coconut oil and I want to send my partner an invitation. What's getting in your way? The kids. Mm-hmm. Great. I'm going to find a babysitter tonight and I'm going to rent a hotel room or I'm going to put the kids to bed early. I'm going to tell the kids that we need private mom and dad need private time. So organizing your focus of your day, you can do that through erotic energy. Because what you're doing is you're stimulating all these neural, all these neurochemicals in your body, like dopamine, which keeps you focused, and serotonin, which makes you feel love. And so how do you feel in your body right now with just like two minutes of rocking? Mm -hmm. More tuned in, more inspired. More tuned in and more inspired. Well, I hope that if people were doing this with us, um, if people are doing this with us that maybe they're feeling that right now Mm -hmm. um in their bodies it's free yeah yeah this is a free tool everyone loves free right Mm -hmm. yeah thank you for sharing that My, my my pleasure it's been really a joy um to spend this time with you yeah can i tell people how to find me yeah, no, you, I was going to hand back to you. I was going to thank you, first of all, for taking time out of your busy day. You are a busy person to come on here and just share some of this knowledge and have like a really hot, con- like I'm a little bit turned on from some of those scenarios that <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> like I might need to go take a second for myself after this. <laughs> Well then, I, well, then I did my job. <laughs> so if people, want, if people want to learn more, first of all, you like, you like free. If you still do Facebook, Pamela Madsen, it's Pamela L. Madsen. It's verified, not, not paid either. It's been verified for like a decade. Um, I'm easy to find. I'm not hiding. And I have a post every day, lots of writing and inspiration. On my Instagram at the Pamela Madsen, you'll find shorter versions of the writings and, you know, that you would find um, on my Facebook account and at Back to the Body Org and go to the website and take the pleasure challenge. We have a great quiz. So if you go to backtothebody.org, take the pleasure quiz, get a free consult, you know, like join the party. And if you haven't had a consult with Tara Rose, do that too. (laughs) Because, you know, I believe in building a tribe of advisors. Mm-hmm. I believe that it's not just one and done. It's it's building, it's not asking for permission, Tara. It's asking for support. And support can come in lots of different places. Yes. And sometimes we want a varied menu of what's available. And there's a free gift and you'll post it. And it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much once again. And thank you to all the amazing listeners for tuning in. Our next episode will probably be out in March if you're listening to this right now. And until next time, claim your pleasure, own your body and stay in presence. Bye.